had a flyby in tribute to the servicemen and women from the state of Colorado serving in the, the Saudi area as uh, Operation Desert Shield uh, continues in these uh, tremulous times. And the tribute to paid here before the game today. Six to six the score at halftime. Here back with live pictures now. Tim Ryan and Irv Pross and uh, four field goals have been uh, the only scoring so far. And uh, Irv, the uh, the offense is both moving the ball effectively until they got into into that so-called red zone range inside the 20 and then having to settle for field goals. One of those coming uh, uh, an opportunity uh, after a fumble by uh, Dilweg on a, a good hit by the, the Broncos set up a field goal. But then Dilweg had a great opportunity to send the pack in front. Yeah, right on the five-yard line. Uh, he goes... Uh, um, to Wilson and Randy Robbins just makes an incredible play there for the Broncos to break it up. But uh, you wonder though, with Wilson and Sterling Sharp both in the same area, maybe one of those receivers might have run the wrong batter. Uh, it looked like Wilson was open and Dilweg uh, had he perhaps lopped to the ball a little more, would have prevented Robbins from tipping it. It would have been a Packer touchdown, but woulda, coulda, shoulda. Fontenot brings it out to the 18 yard line. And the Packers will have the ball to open this second half. In the first half, you can see there were dead even in rushing yards. And Denver with an advantage in passing and also on the clock, 18 minutes to 11.58 for Green Bay. The only turnover, the fumble by Doeg that led to a Treadwell field goal. Not a whole lot of offensive production there, though, Tim. Both these clubs are going to get cranked up here in the second half. So Green Bay from their own 18-yard line. Woodside. Fletcher made the stop out there, not giving him a chance to turn up field. It'll be a gain of two for Green Bay, second and eight. In that first half, Dilway five of 10, Elway nine of 19. The key there, I think, though, Tim, is that Dilway was able to move around the way he wanted. He's had that problem with the, the, the bad arch, but he didn't seem to be affected by it at all in the first half. Passing at 51% as the backup to Don Mikowski getting in the injury time. Seven touchdowns, six interceptions coming into the game. Ed West, the tight end, he drops the ball. Denver has it at the 20 of Green Bay. Dennis Smith recovers it. Turnovers have been the plague of the Packers all year. Time and time again, Tim, this has happened to Green Bay because Dennis Smith comes up with a recovery, but Ed West, who's a good blocking tight end, this time is a receiver here, picks up the ball and is hit by Sam and Simon Fletcher. The ball comes out of there, and there's a recovery by Dennis Smith. But Ed West, again, having a pretty good year as a receiver, he's good basically as a blocking tight end. He gave that one up. Humphrey stacked up after a gain of three in front of that. Green Bay defense, Brown getting into it. The linebackers, Holland and Steven. Second down and eight, and Lindy Infante uh, has just been looking at that kind of activity all season long. They are minus 10 in the turnover ratio for the season, as is Denver. They both hurt themselves badly all year. Blasts his way down to the six yard, make it the 11 yard line. Tiger Green and Mark Murphy are there to meet him. Tim, great running backs have uh, the unique styles and things they do. Now, Bobby Humphrey is a kind of a back who really doesn't want anybody to touch him. And most great backs are like that. Watch how he uses his free hander as he comes outside. Bang, knock off that potential tackler. All great backs do a pretty good job of using their free hand to use that to knock off potential fly, uh, tacklers. Humphrey coming up field for good yardage. The Broncos put Sammy Winder in for Humphrey as they approach scoring position. They love to see him get a touchdown. They go to Bratton, and Bratton, he bobbled the ball, but fell down on top of it right at the 10-yard line. Met by Matt Brock and Bob Nelson. This is really amazing. You know, you know both teams are very conscious of trying to hold on to the ball because their turnover ratio is so bad. But here comes Bratton inside his hit. The ball bounces out of his arm. Unfortunately, he falls back on top of it. 
but this is almost another turnover. Again, you can see Bratton giving it up. Number 54, Steven, the guy knocked it out of there. And Bratton is lucky enough to hit the ball right back on the ball. Close to the first down, they're measuring it. Bratton, uh, who became the starter again today to get the first down, taking that spot back from uh, Kerry Porter. Bratton's been having a problem keeping his weight in trim over the course of this season, and a local reporter watched him at a recent party just last week, and he ordered the uh, Shrimp Alexander entree, six jumbo shrimp, $16.95 for an appetizer, the ladies' 24-ounce porterhouse steak for $27.95, and topped it off with a three-pound lobster. So he's got nowhere to hold that ball, or that's the problem. <laughs> Did he have dessert? There goes Humphrey. Humphrey gets to the five-yard line. No, as a matter of fact, he declined dessert, saying loudly enough for Coach Reeves, who was there, is to hear, I have a weight problem. <laughs> oh, I guess so. Bobby Humphrey again working to his left side. The, the defense is right side again. Watch how again how he maneuvers with that free hand, trying to work off tackle, can't quite find it, and then just slips outside till he finds daylight. Now he comes upfield. Again for positive yard. That play was really designed to go off tackle. Couldn't find it, and he kept sliding outside until he found daylight. Second and goal from the five-yard line. Bennett in for Holland, a linebacker for Green Bay. Humphrey, touchdown! Humphrey just waltzed down in there through a huge hole in the middle of the Green Bay defense. Tim, a lot of teams call this play a Baltimore late because it's so prominent with the old Baltimore Colts. You see the back coming inside. That's a foul that lead block from Mel Bratton, who does a pretty good job there taking down the linebacker, and it's a real easy touchdown for Bobby Humphrey. Well, Melvin Bratton may have uh, been battling the bulge during the course of this season, but he applied his weight very well with a great block there for Humphrey, his teammate. He was, he was bulking up because he wanted to be a good lead blocker. He wanted <laughs> that weight for that block. Treadwell with a point after. And so Humphrey has the game's first touchdown from five yards out. And the Denver Broncos, on the strength of it, take a 13-6 lead. Thirteen to six, a fine looking young player from Alabama. Over a thousand yards again this season. Treadwell kicks it off for the Broncos. Charles Wilson from in the end zone will not bring it out. Well, tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern Time, CBS Sports coverage of college football continues with the John Hancock Bowl. Southern California and Michigan State from El Paso. And then New Year's Day at 1.30 Eastern, it'll be the Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic. The Texas Longhorns ranked number three, the Hurricanes of Miami number four, in a game that will help decide the national championship. You'll see it here at 1.30 Eastern on CBS Sports. 20 yards and five plays after the fumble recovery by Smith. Fumble drop by Ed West, the tight end, setting up that go-ahead touchdown. Delweg sets up the screen to Haddox on first down. And he is met on the corner by Lucas. Picked up only about a yard. This is really well played by the Denver defense, though, Tim. But one of the things your linebackers do is play outside plays pretty well. Delweg going back. Has plenty of time to set this screen up, and it looks pretty good right here. We can see number 73, Simon Fletcher, lets him know that he's close by. But the key here, then, but the key for the defense, though, is to contain everything. The outside linebackers for the Broncos do a pretty good job of keeping all that offensive flow in front of them. Only a yard picked up as a result. Lucas is good work. Second and nine. Sterling sharp in motion. Dilway just got it away to Sharp, and Sharp has the first down. Simon Fletcher with the rush on Dilway. Dennis Smith with the rush on Sharp after he caught it. Simon Fletcher told me yesterday I would be stunned if one guy on this team didn't give all. Look at this guy. He's, he's been on every play, number 73. A lot of heat there again on Dilway. Gets the ball away at the last second, and Sterling Sharp does a smart thing with bad ribs. Step out of bounds with it, right? Absolutely. Well, he's he's protecting those cracked ribs, and uh, you can't blame him there when a guy's he can't go much farther upfield. And uh, Smith, a hard hitter, had a beat on him. Yeah. First down, Green Bay. Thirty-one. 
Bill Wig on play action. Harry Kemp. And Kemp has another Green Bay first down. He's driven back. But his forward progress should give him the first down near the 44-yard line. Steve Atwater wrapped him up. Well, Atlanta over Dallas earlier today. Now the Cowboys need help tomorrow night from the Rams over the Saints to get in. Cincinnati beating Cleveland. And they need developments from the Pittsburgh-Houston game and the Seattle-Detroit game underway. Giants over New England. San Francisco edging Minnesota. Hugely disappointing year for the Vikings. 49ers looking back. Dillweg is sacked by Holmes at the 32-yard line. Dillweg and Hard seem to bump together there as Dillweg was trying to set up. What happens here is that uh, Dillwick has one of his offensive linemen pull to help him. Number 67, Billy Gard is out there to help him on, as a lead blocker. But it frees Ron Holmes, who beats his man, comes to Scott Free, does everything well. Get your hands up high, obstruct the quarterback's vision, and then sack him. Boy, terrific play. Oh, oh yeah. Anthony Dillweg uh, talked to us yesterday about the education this season has been, getting his chances to play when Mikowski was hurt. And as a second-year man, he feels that at least personally it's been a valuable year for him despite the Packers' record. Almost intercepted. Not a good throw from the man from Duke intended for no A diving attempt by Atwater. The check it, not Atwater. Leo Lang, number 21. Lee Lo Lang. Name sound kind of odd. Great story, Tim. His mother, when he was born, couldn't decide what his name should be, so she put a bunch of names in a hat. He has an uncle named Uncle Lee. She didn't want to call him Lee, so she called him Lee Lo. Put the names in the hat, shook up the hat, and pulled Lee Lo out of the hat. So his name is Lee Lo Lang. So some of the players around here were kidding him and said, look, you think Lee Lo sounds funny? His name could have been six and seven eights. <laughs> <laughs> Great kid. <laughs> Lee Lo. They like him, too. Oh, yeah. He's Lee High in Dan Reed's eyes at the moment. Yeah. Dilway flush. Now looking for a man. Let's it fly downfield for Sharp. He's got it. Touchdown. A flag down at the line of scrimmage. There is Mrs. Sharp cheering on Shannon and Sterling today. And that time she gets a cheer for Sterling in the end zone. Warren Powers put a hit on Dillweg, and the penalty may be against Powers. Let's see. Either that or a hole in the forward pass. He went backwards beyond the line of scrimmage when he put nope. Dillway crossed the line of scrimmage. Sterling looks exactly like Mama, by the way. Oh, exactly. Oh First time we saw that picture of Mrs. Sharp. <laughs> the ball is spotted on the 35-yard line. Take a look and see where Dillwig's arm, you know, the ball is, once he throws the ball. Remember a year ago, the Green Bay had a big play in Green Bay against the Chicago Bears where Mikowski rolled towards the inline to the line of scrimmage through the ball at about 35 yard line there's a line of scrimmage guys approach it here is the ball away before he crosses the 30 no oh, boy he's over the 35 clearly over the line of scrimmage illegal forward pass great call by the officials so the touchdown wiped out as we see Dilweg again letting it fly takes a tremendous shot from powers as he releases the ball and the touchdown wiped out turns into a punt. Bracken from the 15-yard line. Kevin Clark waits for it at the 25. In the sun, he makes a good grab. It comes down at the 25-yard line, a 45-yard punt. 8.04 to go, third quarter. And that was before the game today, the two brothers playing against each other for the first time ever. And Shannon, number 81, said uh, probably his sister would root for him. She's here today. And his mom, Mary, probably would root for Sterling. Well, you saw mom Mary rooting for Sterling on that touchdown pass from Dillweg that was called back. So we're talking to Sterling Sharp during the pregame warm up. He says, yeah, my mom is here, but the whole family is sitting on the different Broncos sideline on the side of the field. 
We saw her with pennants from each team in her hand. That one in and out of the hands of Jackson from Elway, a flag down, downfield. Jackson had a couple of drops last week against Seattle. He said he wouldn't let that bother him, though, Tim. If it happened to him his rookie year, he might have been disturbed by it. But uh, he's been around a long time, made a lot of big plays, and expects to make big plays. There was no infraction on the play. There was only 11 men on defense, second down. Only 11? That's all you're supposed to have. You can have 11 or fewer. You can't have any more. Well, I guess they must have thrown a flag uh, thinking that there were 12 men on the field. I assume that's what Jerry Seaman is saying. That, uh, what, does, what does he mean, only 11? A flag was thrown and then picked up. <laughs> Second and 10 from the 25-yard line. Jackson comes out left again, and Young goes to the right side. 13 to 6 Denver lead. Shannon Sharp is on the field. They hand it to Humphrey. Humphrey gets about three yards. Packers read that well, and it was Tim Harris making the tackle. I think the Packers read it well, Tim, because the play hit so fast, they really didn't have a chance to react to pass. I mean, it looked like run all the way. Even though we we're in a passing formation, as soon as Humphrey came back to the other way, the defense reacted and called run and, and played it that way and played it real well. A four-yard pickup moves the ball to the 29-yard line of the Denver Broncos. Tim Harris last night told us that he's in the last year of his contract. On February 1st, he becomes a free agent. And he may be one of those Packer players who last year had all kinds of problems with contracts. Trying to get in the camp could be a, a contract problem this year. Unfortunately, his stats are nowhere near as good as they were a year ago. Seven sacks, 62 tackles coming into the game. And 19 and a half sacks last year. There's a sack there on John Elway and it is Tony Bennett the number one pick from Mississippi Tim you'd have to call that a coverage side because Elway had plenty of time to deliver that ball there was like three seconds four seconds five seconds a scene but watch this his offensive line does a pretty good job of giving him time to set up the throw but everybody's covered can't find an open receiver so he waits and waits nothing happens and here comes Tony Bennett to make the sack However, there is a defensive holding penalty against Green Bay. Oh, boy. Six defense, first down. Leroy Butler. Maybe that's why he couldn't find a receiver open. Butler was in the secondary holding somebody and uh, was caught. So it's a first down, Broncos, at the 34-yard line of Denver. They lead 13-6. to six. The only touchdown, accounting for the only... Denver points so far in this second half. Bobby Humphrey's five-yard run. Melvin Bratton gets about five yards on that carry out to the 39-yard line of the Broncos. Seattle on top of Detroit. The Seahawks with a victory trying to get into the uh, playoffs. San Diego leading the Raiders 9-7. That helps the Kansas City Chiefs playoff picture. That's on top of Tampa Bay, 13 to seven. Second and five, Denver from their 39 yard line. Shadows over most of the field here now at Mile High Stadium. Temperatures will drop accordingly. They'll wait to mark Jackson first down, Broncos. For the 49 of Green Bay, Tiger Green is there with the tackle. Nicely designed pass, Tim. When when the offense rolls, you'll see the defense react here. Elway, when he starts to go back and roll, you'll see the linebackers move along with him. Now, that creates a hole right there. There's an alleyway he can use to drill the ball to his receiver there, Mark Jackson, who comes through on a hook pattern. Well-designed play, complete a pass. First down, Denver, 48-yard line of Green Bay. Draw play. Humphrey gets only about a yard. Mark Murphy came up from safety to make the tackle and got help there from Johnny Holland. First down draw. And again, the, the Broncos are going in sort of a pass-oriented type of an attack here. You know, on first down, instead of running a play with, uh, you know, something off tackle or a sweep or something, they decided to run a, a draw action, simulate pass, and then run the ball. So they're trying to keep that defensive line off balance. Gary Kubiak, number eight, uh, warming up on the sidelines for Denver, maybe just trying to keep his hands warm down there, or perhaps Dan Reeves is planning on getting him in in this final game. Elway, and that 
pass complete to the tight end K, but a flag is down. K near the first down marker. Murphy on the tackle, number 37. Offside, nose guard on the defense, penalty be declined, first down. Penalty against the Packers. First down, Denver at the Green Bay 37-yard line now. We mentioned Seattle in the lead over Detroit at Seattle today. They can uh, claim the fifth playoff berth in the AFC with a win over the Lions if Houston is uh, the loser tonight to Pittsburgh. Had Cincinnati lost today, they would win with a victory over Detroit, but Cincinnati beat Cleveland. Delay of game, offense, still first down. Twice now, well, the uh, Broncos have taken delay of game penalties, sir. Well, you, there's a man responsible right there, number seven. The quarterback has to get that ball snapped in time, and he had plenty of time to get to the line and do that, but it's the second time today. Elway has run out of time before the ball is snapped. It just shouldn't happen. First and 15 now back out at the Green Bay 42 near the 43-yard line. Young goes wide right. Mark Jackson comes out to the left. Vance Johnson has not returned since suffering that calf injury back early in the first quarter. Play action fake to Humphrey. And that is complete to Chris Berholtz, the tight end number 86, getting his first catch of the day. And not much of a gain on the play. Well, the playoff schedule next week will look like this in the NFC. The Bears await uh, what happens to the New Orleans Saints tomorrow night if they beat the Rams. That's who uh, the Bears will face at home. Washington will be at Philadelphia. The 49ers and Giants have the week off and await the winners of those two games. A little more complicated in the AFC, particularly in the Central Division. Second down, 14. Elway steps up nicely and lets it fly for Mark Jackson and overthrows everybody. He had a feeling John really forced that one, Tim, because uh, Jackson was uh, really well covered back there with both safeties. Didn't have much of a chance of completing that pass. And had the ball been thrown closer to the receiver, I think the defensive backs would have come up with it. Look at this again now. Elway stepping up in the pocket and uh, just drills this thing and throws it nearly as far as he can. And you can see the safety's number 23. And you'll see the safety coming from the other side. Well, you don't see him coming to the other side. He ran through him. But both safeties are in great shape. Had the ball saved in the field of play to pick it off. Third down and 14. Delway rolls to his right and now finds Jackson and makes a nice catch. Despite having Butler wrapped around his leg, Jackson to the 15-yard line of Green Bay. Tim, this is what, Tim, this is what uh, Elway was telling us yesterday. I feel more comfortable rolling out of that pocket. I can buy time. You know, so many quarterbacks, when they go down, get hurt in the pocket. Now, this is a designed rollout. He drops back on the pocket, uh, straight back, and then rolls to his right. Now, Jackson is the primary receiver coming all the way across field, and Elway, once he gets out of, outside of the defensive end, has lots of time to measure himself to make this throw. Right, First down at the 15-yard line of Green Bay. Drop from Elway, hits Jackson again. Touchdown! Well, the Packers were only one of three teams Elway has not thrown a touchdown pass against, and he has now erased that from the board with this strike to Jackson. Mark Jackson on a crossing pattern again to the. Uh, Packers going into a zone coverage, dropping him, letting a linebacker pick him up, and Elway hit him right between the linebackers and defensive backs for the touchdown. A 15-yard pass from John Elway to Mark Jackson Treadwell for the point after. And it is good. So the Denver Broncos now lead the Green Bay Packers 20 to 6. 2-10 left in the third quarter.
Tim Ryan with Irv Cross at Mile High Stadium where the Broncos have taken a 20 to 6 lead on a 15 yard pass from Elway to Mark Jackson. 75 yards and 10 plays for the score. Wilson the deep man waiting for Treadwell's kickoff. Wilson from a yard deep. Over the 20 to the 21 yard line. Let's see that touchdown play again, Herb. Let's see what Elway saw. You'll see number 95, Bryce Pulp, a rookie uh, linebacker from Northern Iowa, was responsible for the hook coverage here in the zone. Now, watch Jackson when he comes across right to left of your screen. 95 has to come out of that hook area and get in there and, and prevent that play. Jackson beats him in there for the touchdown. Mark Jackson, a couple of drops last week and uh, one here earlier today, but comes up with a couple of big plays on that drive. 75 yards for the score. Gilwig up the middle, in and out of the hands of Sharp, picked up. Wyman Henderson still going. Gilwig had the ball in the hands of Sterling Sharp. But it came right through. And another turnover, three costly ones today for the Packers. And that has been the problem all season long. Turner was always hurt, Tim, but this one really hurts because it really was a completed pass. Sterling Sharp had this ball in his hands, and then boom, right off a shoulder pad, and Wayman Henderson picks it off. Now, most teams have an interception return. Now, the Broncos will do that. They'll take that interceptor and lead him to the far sideline. Wyman Henderson picks up a good wall of blockers here, coming up inside near the 10-yard line for the Broncos. Gary Kubiak now at quarterback, replacing Elway. And they give us to Sammy Winder. Not much for him. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Harris making the initial contact. Gary Kubiak, the eighth-year backup from Texas A&M, drafted number eight back in 1983 by the Broncos. He's been a uh, loyal and supportive number two behind John Elway. Well, Tim, you know that when Elway talked about having more input in the offense, he was also talking about Kubiak. Now, both Elway and Kubiak meet with the coaches on Mondays and then on uh, on uh, Fridays to go over the passing game game plan. So these guys have a, a, a in-depth knowledge of the passing attack. Inside handoff. That is Melvin Bratton getting to about the six-yard line. Without even knowing what the play is going to be, I think some way Dan Reeves would like to call some kind of a play where Sammy Winder will end up with the ball. <laughs> because he, he told us the other day, he said, I would love to see Sammy get in the end zone and do his Mississippi mud routine. That's going to be his last opportunity here as a, a Bronco because he has announced his retirement. Oh, gee, he's coming off the field. Okay, it won't happen. Steve Sewell has gone in offensively. Role player on these passing situations frequently as the running back who can catch the ball out of Oklahoma. And that's going to bring us to the end of the third quarter with the score, Denver 20 and Green Bay 6. Tim Ryan with Irv Cross back at Mile High Stadium. Denver on top and threatening again. Third and five. Sammy Winder is in there. The ball at the six-yard line. And the Winder fans with a nice tribute for Sammy in his final game as a Denver Bronco. And they fake to him. Elway under pressure is dropped. Kubiak, pardon me. Kubiak in for Elway. And dropped for a loss of about a half a yard. Looked like Sean Patterson got him after the first pressure from Tim Harris. The Broncos will run their quarterbacks a lot around the 10-yard line. They like, of course, Elway's an exceptional runner. They like to run that quarterback draw. That time they, they faked um, a reverse, and they wanted to have Kubiak go field with it and just couldn't, couldn't find anybody. Treadwell will attempt the field goal. They'll spot it at the 14-yard line. It'll be a 24-yard field goal try. Fredwell has two already today. And Kubiak is dropped back at the 18-yard line after they either planned that uh, pass attempt 
Or nope. Kubiak had to go for it. Let's see what no. happens on the snap. This is a fake, Tim, because the snap is good. He just gets up. This is a fake yep. all the way. This is a fake field goal, and the Packers didn't go for it. Mark Murphy comes up with a key play. We'll return to Mile High Stadium after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Battles across the field, and things a little cooler than the 30 degrees we started with. And off that fake field goal, the Packers take over at their own 18-yard line. Dillwig play action. He's got a man wide open, Sterling Sharp, and he takes it up to the 42-yard line. Let's go back. Uh, were you a little surprised at this play in this uh, situation, Irv? Yeah, I was, Tim, but yeah, I, the only reason I think he might have done it is that they wanted to get the ball into Sammy Winder's hand. This is a fake all the way, but number 23, Sammy Winder, is a wingback on the left side of the formation over here. He, but, 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 but he blocks and never really uh, get, gets out of there. So as a result, he never gets into the, there he is right there. He never, never gets into the play, and uh, the Denver Broncos are caught for loss. So I'm sure that, that Reeves wanted to find some way to get Winder in the end zone, and that's why they probably went with the fake. First down at the 41, play action. Out to the tight end, Jackie Harris, number 80, for a gain of close to eight yards. For an NFL update, let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Tim, uh, the Dallas Cowboys failed to claim the last NFC wildcard spot this afternoon, losing to the Atlanta Falcons 26-7. to After the game, it was a very obviously disappointed Jimmy Johnson. Now the Saints get ready to play Chicago. Pardon? I said the Saints can get ready to play Chicago. What, That's what exactly what will happen if the Saints beat the Rams tomorrow night. Let's go back to Tim and Irv. Well, thank you, Greg. That playoff picture, as we said, going right to the wire. We'll go all the way to Monday night. This is Thompson with a lot of running room. And he decks Atwater. He forced him out of bounds, but the rookie from Minnesota showed some power there. Decking Atwater is not easy to do. Atwater comes with a load. He's 6'3 and 217 and has a reputation of really destroying running backs. He did a great job against Christian Okoye from Kansas City. He was a tremendous power back. But here, Daryl Thompson going off his right tackle. Good job up front. Mandridge and Walsham getting key blocks up there. Now, he just demonstrates his ability to open up here with his speed. Now, when a collision develops, watch this. He's going to put his shoulder down and meet Atwater shoulder to shoulder. And I'll tell you, Thompson won that one. 27-yard gain, Green Bay now at the Denver 23-yard line. Play action, wide open, Ed West. West breaks a tackle, and he struggles his way down near the 7-yard line. Ed West, who committed a costly fumble that led to a Denver score earlier, comes up big here. I'm sure he'd like to go ahead and find a way to try to make up for that fumble. West is on the far side of your screen at tight end. What he'll do is come down inside, realize there's no one there to fake to. He's going to fake a block. They come back outside into the flat. Dillwick picks him up out there, and he makes good yardage before Dennis Smith finally forces him out with uh, some help from his teammates, Carl Mecklenburg. So the Packers knocking on the door at the seven-yard line. Early here in the fourth quarter, 11.37 to play in regulation time. Play action again, and the pass overthrown intended for Woodside. Had he given the ball to Haddocks, I think Haddocks would have been in the end zone. That's right. It looks like the Bronco defense is playing pass all the way here. They had a sort of like a wide charge where the defensive lineman sort of opened up and came up. So what they want to do is try to keep uh, Dillwig in the pocket and uh, had that ball been handed off to the running back, number 35, he would still be running, I think, because that middle was wide open. But that's part of the guessing game. Holmes back in defensively. Galloway had been in for a few plays for the Denver Broncos. Second and goal from the seven. Woodside trying to get outside and can't do it. Dennis Smith came up very well. And a loose ball. It is a Denver ball. Woodside coughed it up. It appeared the play was over. But Cragen and Brooks put the hit on him. Let's see. You may want to take a look at this again, Tim, because it looked like he was on the ground before that ball came out of there. But again, this time, it's got a misdirection. The uh, Packers go one way, come back with the running back. Woodside is hit. 
Now, is his knee on the ground when that yes. ball comes out? I well, think so. Because his knee was definitely on the ground when the ball came out. That is not a fumble. In my opinion, he was uh, down. But the opinion of the replay official, Dave Kamansky, is clearly more important. And I'm sure they'll take a look. We'll be back at Mile High Stadium in a moment. And Dave Kamansky is uh, looking at the last one, which was by Keith Woodside. And uh, whether or not that is going to stand, we are awaiting it. No, really, looking at turnover number, though, for the Green Bay Packers, uh, Coach Infani told us that, uh, you know, interceptions, you can understand once in a while, but fumbles, we have to control. We must hold the football. They've had three fumbles they've lost today. If this one goes through as a fumbled play, now, we'll take a look at it again and see what we can see here. Look to me, and when Woodside number 33 was hit, now, see if his knee is on the ground before that ball comes out of there. Right now, he has possession of it. Now, we don't know if it's out right now here or not, but his knees are down. Now, it looks like his ball is still cradled under his arm. All right, his, the, the knee is down. He's still, now they take the ball away. What happens to so the ball is taken away as he goes down. But the, the inconclusive and the Broncos retain possession. So four Green Bay turnovers have really put them in deep trouble. And here is a wide open hole for Sammy Winder who brings it up to the 28-yard line of Denver. <laughs> Tim, you won't find many players as popular anywhere with their home team as Sammy Winder. Boy, he's just a guy who's just worked and plugged away all of his career here with the, the Broncos. Nine years here. Not real fast, not real strong, but as tough as nails. He's going to go back to Jackson, Mississippi after today's game and go home where he lives and go in this heavy construction business. I asked him how he got in that business. He said, well, everybody bought some property down there, and a guy came up with a bulldozer to clear it out for me. Charged me $3,500 after working for only one day. He said, you can make that kind of money. That's the business I want to be in. So he's in that business. <laughs> what a guy. All kinds of action along the line here. Flags fly in all directions. Four of them and all. Winder's got 36 yards rushing today. He's had only 40 all season coming into the game. Encroachment prior to the snap. Number 88 offense. Still first down. So the call against Clarence K of Denver. Quite a career for the man you were just talking about, Irv. Rushing over 5,000 yards, and that was a really tough rushing yards. Uh, running inside for the Broncos and scoring 39 touchdowns and does a pretty good job receiving the football. And But the thing with him, though, I think, oh, Tim, he's a quiet guy. He's a, kind of a player who leads by example. He's not a rah rock gung ho fellow, but if you need third and one, he's the man to give the ball to. Winder again. Not much on that one as the Packers responded well. Holland, Harris... Out there on the left side. Green Bay with that fumble lost. Just continuing to add to their giveaways this year. They came into the game with 17 interceptions, 14 lost fumbles. They've lost two more fumbles, uh, three fumbles today, and an interception by Wyman Henderson. So four more turnovers today. John Elway encouraging Gary Kubiak. In fact, looks like he's trying to change the play for him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run that one. <laughs> uh, look at this thing. That's right. Kubiak says, maybe you're right. <laughs> Coming out, yeah. <laughs> so we'll be back at Mile High Stadium in a moment. There's a mobile one synthetic motor oil. Isn't your car worth the extra protection? AT&T, the right choice. And by Dean Witter. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Here in Denver, Colorado, the Broncos lead 20 to 6, 9.55 to play. John Elway on the sidelines watching Gary Kubiak. And he's finished for the season. A disappointing year for both Elway and the Broncos, but he's already looking ahead to some golf activity. He's a seven handicap, and he'll play in the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am right here on CBS Sports. His partner will be a Colorado pro Mark Wiebe. So you talk about his handicap, though, Tim. He was sheepishly uh, telling us, that, you know, my handicap used to be a four. He said, well, now I'm a seven. Well, well, Probably all the golf. distraction of a difficult football season. I think so, yeah. Affecting his golf game. He has a couple <laughs> of points as handicap. <laughs> Second down, and Kubiak finds his man, Sewell. Sewell all the way to the 45-yard line of Green Bay. Tiger Green forces him out there. 
Tiger Green was responsible one-on-one -on -one for Sewell. They're all, all over the field. You can see number 30 here and number 23 locked up with one another. But Kubiak picks up uh, Sewell coming across in the crossing pattern and gets a little bit of a step on Tiger for a completed pass. And going up field there for another five or ten yards where he can finally get him out of bounds. 35-yard play. Kubiak to Sewell. Down to the Green Bay 42-yard line. Bratton about a yard. Dent and Murphy made the stop there. Sterling Sharp sitting on his helmet. A little technique involved there. Were you a helmet sitter? Look at this no, thing he's really. got on his head here. here. Well, he, he does that himself. He uses a, that's a, a silver ink that he does. He prints uh, various things on his hat. He says, I like my hat to be different. He's got a whole bunch of these things that he does with, the, with his personal signature on them. That's part of it to, to print the various names on the, a variety of hats he has. Looks like he had the whole Green Bay roster on that one with Good the numbers day. included. Melvin Bratton injured slightly on the last play, and Kerry Porter comes in. Sammy Winder, a flag thrown as Winder hauled down after a gain of about five, and likely a face mask call, and that will possibly give them the first down. Sammy Winder working off his right tackle. Again, it's a, a draw play. He's trying to get inside here. Can't find much. Breaks a tackle there. Number 56, Bernal Dent misses. Now, there's a face mask penalty right there. Scott Stevens reaching out, trying to get a hold of him. Uh, grasp that face mask just for a split second, so he's going to get called for it. So Denver gets another first down. The ball at the 32-yard line of Green Bay. And the Packers are running out of time. 8.27 to go, trailing 20-6. Three fumbles and an interception, typifying the season of the Green Bay Packers. And putting them in the hole here against the Broncos. Winder cannot get wide. Good defensive response, led by Tiger Green. And then Scott Steven making the hit with Robert Brown, forcing him wide initially. Brown, a quiet, there's a penalty against Denver on the plate. Robert Brown, a quiet guy, 133 straight games. Hasn't missed a game as a Packer except for the strike season. He's one of these guys that you don't hear much about either. You know, you hear so much about Tim Harris and, and a few other players in that club, but Robert Brown's been around. Holy, uh, number 69 defense, still first down. Nine years and quietly does his job. Plays a run real well, a decent pass rush. He has three sacks coming into this game. But one of the concerns the Packers have, those have a little age on that defense. Brown's rounding into 30 years old this year, I guess, and uh, Bob Nelson's 31, and thinking about what's going to happen down the road uh, with some of these older players be back next year is a big question mark. First and 20, Kubiak with a deep drop. Runs out of time and eludes Brown. Patterson got a hand on him as he released the ball, and it falls short of the intended receiver, Michael Young. You talk about a disappointed defensive line. We were talking about Robert Brown. Robert Brown must have chased Kubiak 30 yards and couldn't quite get him. It's one of those things, you know, where you're, where you're almost on the guy, and you can feel him, but you can't quite touch him. He's got his arm extended, chasing Kubiak across. Here he comes. Right? Watch this. Number 93 coming from the backside. Get that arm out. I got him. No, I got him. No. Get the other hand. Can't get him. Got his elbow. No. Slips away. <laughs> and now he's on the ground. He can't believe it. I had him in my grasp, and he got away. Typical oh, of the kind of effort we were just talking about, though, from the veteran Brown out of Virginia Tech. <laughs> oh, boy. Those guys worked so hard to get to the quarterbacks. He had him there, and he was gone. Second and 20. Kubiak goes to the short man Winder, and he's dropped immediately after a gain of only three or four. Johnny Holland, number 50, with the tackle. Denver Broncos trying to wind up with a victory here to give them just five on the season. Hard to believe. A year ago, they were in the Super Bowl. The Packers, uh, 10 and 16 a year ago, that had high hopes for the playoff this year and they'll be on the outside looking in along with the Broncos when the playoff activity begins next week. Third down. 
about 17 for Kubiak. Fakes and runs. And has the first down to the 20-yard line of Green Bay. Flags fly as punches fly. to see this because it's been a, a pretty well played game for two teams who really don't have a, a great deal of stink except pride. I'd like to see them go out uh, on a good note. They've played hard throughout the course of this game. You don't want to really see these penalties come about. What you're seeing really, Tim, is uh, frustration. And the Packers haven't had the kind of a season they had hoped to have. Now they're in a game where they came in thinking they could beat the Denver Broncos. Looks like they're not going to do it today. And you're a little frustrated. You want to take it out on somebody and you wind up uh, swinging at people when the plays are over and you just don't want that. Then finally doesn't... Uh, uh, believe in that and uh, the organization didn't believe in it you, you just hate to see that happen during the course of a football game and all it is is a tipper square because guys are just a little frustrated Not mark, because mark uh, lee was the guy throwing the punches for green bay at uh, trying to uh, put a little hurt on receiver michael young and it was actually away from the ball they had their own little duel going on there. Well, what you don't know about defensive backs and receivers, though, Tim, is sometimes you get locked into a guy, and maybe it starts in the first quarter. If something happens, it's just... personal foul, number 22, and number 36 defense. Personal foul, number 83 offense. All players are ejected. Oh, boy. And that's, that's a pretty severe penalty. All three players are leaving the game, but to finish my thought, Tim, oftentimes defensive backs and wide receivers will get locked into each other, and there's conversation going through the entire game. And then something happens where these things just flare up and you get this sort of thing. You have tempers flare and for a few seconds you forget that you're playing a football game and you wind up swinging at people because you're taking out your personal frustration and it results as it is right here being ejected from the game. Leroy Butler will go along with Mark Lee and Mark Murphy complaining about it. And Michael Young, the receiver. It's really too bad, too, because Michael Young is a, an even-tempered guy. So is Mark Lee. They, don't, they wouldn't normally do this, but uh, tempers flared and got out of control. So their 1990 season ends a little prematurely, 643 short of the actual end of the season. We're at Mile High Stadium in Denver, where the lights are on now in the stadium as the Denver Broncos appear headed to a victory here that will give them only five on the season against the Green Bay Packers, 20 to 6. Jerry Seaman still discussing it with his officials. Mark Lee and Butler are pleading their case, evidently. Tim Ryan and Irv Cross watching this season finale at Denver. Gary Kubiak came in to replace John Elway after the Broncos had a commanding lead. Anthony Dilweg has gone all the way at quarterback for Green Bay. Of course, Don Mikowski injured out for the season several weeks ago and a tremendous loss to the you know, Green Bay hopes for a playoff. Yeah, this, is, this is interesting, Tim. The officials are considering whether or not they should have these college players ejected. Now, Jerry Seaman already announced that Leroy Butler, number 36, and number 22, Mark Lee from the Green Bay Packers should be ejected. He's taking them over now. He'll talk to Coach Infondi to tell him what the ruling is here. And then Michael Young for the Denver Broncos, 83, should also be ejected. Now, what he'll do now is go over to Lindy Infondi and tell them why he's being removed from the game. In the spirit of the season, they might have decided that with only 6.43 left in the 1990 year that uh, they let these guys finish the game. I mean, well, I don't know. <laughs> if he committed a foul, he has to go. <laughs> oh, you're tough, Irv. <laughs> you old screw well, you. the rule book. We're on 22 of the defense, 83 of the offense. 36 was not involved in the play. All right. Okay. Well, we I didn't see foul. Leroy. I didn't see well, Leroy Butler in that. And well, Butler's quite a defense attorney. He was in there pleading his case and won. Yeah. So Lee and Young go. 6.43 to go. And uh, as you can see what's happened here so far, four field goals started the game, two by each team, leaving it 6-6 at the half. And then Bobby Humphrey scored following a Green Bay turnover. He went five yards in for the score. And then uh, Jackson with a 15-yard scoring pass from John Elway, and it's been Kubiak since that time at quarterback for Denver. They have it as play resumes at the 21-yard line of Green Bay. Winder to the 13-yard line. And every Winder carry gets a, a little louder roar from the crowd. If he winds up in the end zone, this place will go crazy because he has something he causes Mississippi mud routine he does in the end. I've never seen him do it, whatever it is, though. It's really a riot. He's, he said he's going to come up with a, 
a special Mississippi Mud performance today if he gets in the end zone. 46 yards rushing on the day. That is more in one game than he had all season long in a relief role. Just 40 coming into the game. Second down, about three for a first down. That would get them to the 11-yard line of the pack. Melvin Bratton, and he'll be close to the first down. They have it. Broncos think they do have it. Tim carrying through with this Mississippi mud routine. Now, if Sammy Winder scores, he starts to do his Mississippi mud routine, would you sing the Mississippi mud song for the Last night, you, you sounded pretty good. It's a treat to beat your feet in the Mississippi oh, mud. Okay. You bet. I promise it. If it gets in there. Okay. I don't remember all the lyrics, but I, <laughs> enough to give the fans the flavor and enough for them to say enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> They're going to measure Bratton's attempt for the first down, and he's got it. Sammy Winder, 30 years of age, nine years out of southern Mississippi in the National Football League. Number five pick back in 1982. Second only to Floyd Little in all-time career rushing yardage and touchdowns for these Denver Broncos. 5-11 and counting down as they'll try to get Winder into the end zone somehow, someway. Play action. Kubiak. Interception by Ron Pitts. His teammates tell him, don't come out. And that ends that opportunity for Winder, although had they scored, he probably wouldn't have gotten an opportunity. The pass was intended for the tight end, K. That's right. Clarence K was the man in the end zone, but uh, people are really disappointed that Broncos gave that ball up because Winder didn't get in. Well, Ron Pitts keeps the Green Bay Packers alive here with an interception of Gary Kubiak in the end zone. 4.54 still to play. Dillweg will bring out the Packers from their own 20-yard line. Sammy Winder being recognized on the big screen here at Mile High Stadium. His farewell appearance. Interesting enough, Tim, Ron Pitts is in there for Mark Lee, who's been ejected from the game. And Lee goes out a couple of plays and pitches up the interception from his position. Dillweg can't find an open man. Trying to make something happen now. Goes deep. He's got Fontenot. No. Fontenot will lose one man and gets down inside the 20 of Denver. Well played by both Dillweg and Fontenot as the experienced running back, seeing Dillweg trying to find an open man, got himself open. Tim, let's go back to that interception that the Broncos gave up. The Clarence K was the man that uh, Kubiak was trying to hit number 88 in the end zone, but number 28, Ron Pitts, rises up here to pick it off. And, you know, it kind of felt, I don't know if Kubiak was upset with the interception or, or what. But anyway, so here comes Dillwick coming back. And this time, he goes upfield and hits Fontenot, who makes a key play for the Packers. 60 yards down near the 20 of Denver. Dillwick. Charles Wilson to the nine-yard line of the Broncos. Packers, if they can get one here, can make this interesting at the end. 436 still to play. I tell you, Tim, what I see here is a team that's really fighting down to the wire. I mean, uh, they had the, the an interception deep in the end zone, the offense, and two plays now have gone nearly the length of the field. They're on the on the nine-yard line after one long pass and then a completion there. So Green Bay still has that uh, fight in them. Fontenot, the lone running back. He is usually in these two-minute type situations as a pass-receiving running back. Three wide outs. Dillway, he's got Sterling Sharp touchdown. Well, that'll make Mama Sharp happy. It won't make his brother Shannon too thrilled. But Denver still leads. But Green Bay really made this drive look easy. This is a quick slant. Now, Dillwig taking a direct snap to the center, finding Sharp on a, a quick post, and the defensive back was nowhere to be seen. Wyman Henderson, number 24, is the man to line up on that side, but he was nowhere around Sharp. He obviously dropped his coverage. Jackie for the point after. So the Green Bay Packers are very much alive with 4.31 still to play 
Sterling Sharp's touchdown brings him back to 20 to 13. Sharp, who uh, looked like he was just resting on the sideline when we last saw him with his baseball hat on of his own design, gets himself geared up, sore ribs and all, and scores a touchdown that closes the gap. Well, these two teams on the outside looking in at the playoff picture. But the AFC picture looks like this right now. Buffalo, Miami, the Raiders, and Kansas City all in. And Buffalo with their title already in hand and a home field advantage throughout the playoffs. The race for the final two spots. Pittsburgh plays tonight against Houston. Cincinnati won today over Cleveland. Seattle was leading Detroit at last report. And, of course, Houston, as we said, will meet the Steelers tonight. Tim, you look at Sterling Sharp. He's really amazing. He hasn't worked out in six or seven weeks uh, during the practice because he's had a variety of injuries, primarily the, 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 the rib problems he had, the, the cracked ribs. But so the guy goes out to practice every day and just watches what's going on and only plays on Sunday. Could you imagine what kind of a year he would have, he would have had, had he been able to stay in top shape throughout the entire season? Well, quite a turnaround in this game because the Broncos were knocking on the door down there and what could have been a put-away score, and instead, they now lead by only seven. Kevin Clark returns it for the Broncos to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. 4.21 to go, and the Green Bay Packers with a chance to get the ball back if they can stop them here. We've got bowl game action for you on CBS tomorrow. The John Hancock Bowl will feature Southern California against Michigan State, ranked number 21 and 22 in the nation, live at 2.30 Eastern Time. I hope you'll join us, and also on New Year's Day, when number three, Texas, faces number four, the Hurricanes of Miami, at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the Cotton Bowl from Dallas. Winder grinds out a couple-of-yard gain. And Green Bay takes a timeout to get that clock stop. 4.14 to go. Brown and Holland made the tackle on Winder. You can see how important turnovers are now. The Green Bay gave the ball up a couple of times. Uh, Denver four responded. Times. Bang. You know, yeah, four times. And, and, and Denver came back and scored right away. Then uh, Denver gives the ball up deep in the end zone, actually in their own end zone. And Green Bay goes the length of the field and scores in a couple of minutes. So. The importance of turnovers, as uh, Lindy and Fani have been saying all along, are just it's critical to our football team. We have to, A, take the ball away from our opponents, and B, stop giving it up so much, particularly in the area of fumbles. Seattle appears en route to a 9-7 and seven season with a healthy lead over Detroit. And then they'll wait and see what happens tonight at Pittsburgh-Houston game. You know, Tim, a poll was taken in Green Bay to uh, vote for the most popular Green Bay Packer coach of all time, including Lombardi and... And, uh, and of course, when Fondi was in that, and then Fondi won the poll, and he was very embarrassed about it. He says, how could anybody see how the, you know, the, the, the most popular coach the Packers ever had when Vince Lombardi and Curly Lambeau, of course, are here? But Vince Lombardi, my gosh, a legend. And they, he's kind of embarrassed about being one of the most popular uh, Packer coach. Denver has a second and eight. The Packers' defense has to somehow get that ball. And it is dropped. Out in the middle by Melvin Bratton. At the 34-yard line, Boy. Scott Steven had a shot at an interception. Actually, this ball was really thrown behind Bratton a little bit, and he couldn't quite get the handle. And you'll see it as it's delivered. Kubiak rushed it just a little bit. He's got a little pressure, steps up there and delivers that ball. And it's not quite on line. You'll see that uh, Bratton had to really reach to get to it. And, boy, I tell you, Stevens almost came up with it. So third down, big play, obviously, here for both teams as Kubiak we see that again to Bratton. Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage by Nelson. Bob Nelson got a hand up on it. And that tipped it away from Bratton. Packers come with a rush. Kubiak eludes it. Finally knocked down by Dent. Short of the first down by about two yards. So the Broncos will have to punt. And we still have 3.59 to go. Uh, you're almost like going into a different kind of a game here now that the 
the Broncos had things pretty much going the wrong way when Elway was in there. He went out. They continued to have the momentum going, and uh, Kubiak moved them uh, pretty well. But now the Packers, after having scored on a long drive, seem to be gaining the momentum here, Tim. They seem to be. Well, we talked about the uh, Packers' turnovers. Uh, Denver, which has hurt themselves all year, also minus 10 coming into the game. And the ratio along with Green Bay turnovers have hurt them in this ball game. And obviously the biggest one, the Kubiak interception by Pitts. Aran's punt taken by Query. Query trying to make a big play coming wide. And unable to do so. Good effort, but he still is stopped at the 20-yard line. A 45-yard punt. Well, after the football activity is over here on CBS, stay with us for primetime entertainment starting with 60 minutes. Why would the mob hire a hitman to do away with Cousin Rose? Not just any Cousin Rose, a mafia Don's Cousin Rose. Well, you guessed it, money. 60 minutes tonight, followed by Murder, She Wrote. And then the CBS Sunday movie, Vestige of Honor. Green Bay from the 21-yard line, 3.44 to go. Don Mikowski hoping they can force overtime. They need a converted touchdown to do so. Dilweg, 15 of 23 passing, 232 touch, uh, yards, one touchdown, and one interception. A high snap. Dilweg trying to cover it at the two-yard line. Does so. Oh, my goodness. James Camp in the center snapped it over the quarterback's head. What a lousy time for that, because you never wanted to happen. Well, what a time for that to happen now. As a matter of fact, he's in pretty good shape. He doesn't have anybody over his head. The Broncos are in a four-man line. The center was free. There was really no reason for him to have a snap like that. He just simply threw the ball away. Oh, boy. Well, Infante gave him a Lombardi-like glare there. Second and 29. Dilweg sacked in the end zone. Safety. Mecklenburg, number 77, and Dilweg slow to get up. Tim, let's take a look and see what Dilweg saw. Number 77, Carl Mecklenburg, was lined up in his uh, inside linebacker position on the left side of the screen. Now, Dilweg goes back. To drop back and look up good. He can't see Dil uh, 77 Mecklenburg coming from his backside. And Carl comes through spot three for a two point play. And you saw Mecklenburg get his hand up on the passing arm. There's the experienced pass rusher making sure Dilway could not get rid of the ball. Right. Goes to the right arm first. Watch this number 77. Hit that right arm. Bang. Can't get rid of it. Two points. Well, a huge two points, clearly. Now the Packers would have to score twice. 3.24 to go, and they've got to give the ball to Denver. Carl Mecklenburg, outstanding Denver Bronco player for a number of years now in his eighth at the University of Minnesota. Tim, both of his legs are bad. He has two bad knees, and right after the season's over, he's going into the hospital to have both knees scoped. There's Carl Mecklenburg, and you see the Raiders have clinched the AFC West title with a victory over San Diego, a bit of a struggle, but what a job Art Shell has done with the Raiders. 17 to 12 over San Diego today. Raiders who were already in the playoffs clinched the title with that victory today. I'd imagine you're going to hear some kind of a comment from Carl Peterson, who's president of the Kansas City Chiefs, though, about the, the Chargers playing a backup quarterback rather than their regular starter in that game against the Raiders. But here he is, Carl Mecklenburg, who going to go into the hospital for surgery on both knees as soon as the season's over. So it'll be sometime next week. Green Bay took a timeout here before uh, Bracken was to punt from the uh, safety circumstance at the 20-yard line. And Denver is now realigning their return people. They were uh, set up for it. For the Broncos, uh, it looks like they're going to go to 5-11, and 11, fifth in the AFC West this year. The fourth straight Super Bowl team to miss the playoffs the following season. Kind of a remarkable stat. But mainly the worst record they've had since 1961. What success they've had under Pat Bolin and his management and ownership uh, here in Denver. For Green Bay, a disappointing year like the Broncos. Turnovers killed them. The loss of Mikowski going out on November 18th. And the eighth consecutive year they missed the playoffs. They just missed it last year, Irv. 
people thought they'd be in this yeah. year. Tim, you know, because Lindy Infani will not accept any excuses. And he'll say, we don't have any excuses. But golly, when you lose your starting quarterback and injury for most of the season, that has to hurt. When your offensive line comes into training camp late because of a contract dispute and he can't quite get that line solidified during the course of the season, that has to hurt. So the Packers, and of course they've had some injury problems as well too in the turnovers, but uh, if they can come back in the training camp with everybody ready to go, they'll be okay next year. Packers have decided to have Jackie place kick the ball. It's their option. Bracken was out there to punt it. And uh, he took himself off the, off the field for some reason, whether it was wind, lights, whatever, but they've uh, opted to with uh, the return that Denver showed to uh, try for the onside kick. And there it is. It goes to the Denver Broncos, Steve Atwater, and he just makes sure he's got it for the Broncos at the 39-yard line of Green Bay. So we may get one more chance for Sammy Winder here with 320 still to play. The Green Bay just changed their thinking there from giving the ball to Denver to trying the onside kick to try to keep possession. They need to score twice, obviously. Sure. I would guess just doing how um, Dan Reeves felt coming into this game because it is Sandy, Sammy Weiner's last game as a Denver Bronco player. He's out to announce his retirement. That, uh, he's only got uh, three minutes and 20 seconds of football left that Dan would figure some kind of way to get the ball in Weiner's hands as much as possible to get him in the end zone. Winder with 10 carries has his 11 and gets about six to the 34-yard line. And Green Bay takes another timeout. <laughs> There's Pat Bowman, the fur coat, the owner of the Denver Broncos. You know, the story that uh, came out not too long ago that there were 26 people on the coaching staff and players on the hit list and Bolin made the comment, yeah, I wonder if I'm on that hit list. <laughs> he didn't know anything about it. No such thing existed, and they kind of joked about it, but uh, there that he is. That story was on the NFL Today. Oh, it was. Oh, on CBS. <laughs> well, there he is. Uh, very enthusiastic, energetic owner of the Denver Broncos, and uh, they're going to finish the season on a high note. Well, a regular season schedule as a result of the uh, fifth victory today and the where they finished in uh, their standings. Of course, their divisional games home and away against uh, Kansas City, the Raiders, San Diego, Seattle, and then they'll face not a real overloaded schedule. they got to play the 49ers, either Philadelphia or Washington, but the rest of that uh, fairly attractive. Well, that's, that's the advantage, really, of having that fifth-place schedule. You know, Dallas had that situation this year. I, I just wonder how good were the Dallas Cowboys. They made a great turnaround from only one win last year to the season they had this year, but the schedule in comparison to the uh, you know, the top teams really wasn't as difficult. And that's a fifth, good good fifth, point. Yeah, fifth-place schedule, fifth schedule gives you a chance to come back. Second down at six here with 3.09 on the clock. The Packers have used up their timeouts. Winder, he's got a first down. Sammy Winder to the 27-yard line at Green Bay. Funny thing right here now, Tim, is I think the Green Bay Packers know that Denver wants Sammy Winder to score. And I think everybody in the stadium knows it. And we'll see whether or not the Broncos can get him in there. But the, you can't uh, cheat with the defense. You have to play it honest to make sure you play everything you see there and react to it. But uh, I would have a tendency to lean towards Sammy. 58 yards rushing for Sammy now on 12 carries. Nelson, Brock, and Brown across the front. Now they bring up the linebackers. They're looking for the winder run. And they get it. Bratton with a good block up the middle. And winder uh, grinds out another three yards to the 25. Bryce Pop. Rookie linebacker from Northern Iowa made the stop. And we are coming up to the two-minute warning here at Mile High Stadium. The Denver Broncos lead 22 to 13. Two minutes to play here in Denver, winding up the season for the Packers and the Denver Broncos. Tim Ryan with Irv Cross here at Mile High Stadium. And uh, for Green Bay, this is what their schedule will look like in 1991 as a result of their loss today and their placing in the standings this year. In addition to their divisional opponents, uh, they get Atlanta, Buffalo, Dallas, Indianapolis, Miami, the Jets, either the Eagles or the Saints, or Washington or the Rams. So like uh, Denver, 
and not a bad schedule. A chance for them to do something if they put it together. Second down and seven. Winder gets to the 20-yard line, leaving uh, two for a first down. Packers are out of timeouts. Well, we'd like to uh, acknowledge these folks who bring you NFL football all season long, coordinating producers of the NFL on CBS, Charles H. Milton III and Ed Gorin, and Chuck Milton, resident of Colorado. Today's game produced by Daniel Four, directed by Michael Arnold, associate producer Diane Patterson, broadcast associate Adam Berger. 123 and counting down. Kubiak with a long count to use up some more clock time. Winder uh -oh. at the hole. Winder pulled down at the seven yard line by Tiger Green. Nearly broke loose. Oh, gee whiz. What a way. What? Here's Sammy coming off tackle. Gant gets a good block of his lead backer. Blocker uh, Melvin Bratton skips off that block and then breaks the tackle there. Number 23, Tiger Green, is hanging on until help comes. And he hangs on, hangs on long enough until he finally gets help from Bernal Dent. But Sammy is knocking at the door. 79 yards for Sammy Winder. The NFL today was produced by Eric Mann and directed by Duke Struck. Senior producer David Winter, executive producer of CBS Sports, Ted Shaker. Another just going to do a little kneel down here as this game will come to an end and a chance for me to acknowledge two gentlemen who have worked so hard for us all season long our statistician Dick Bossing and our spotter Terry Kane and thank you you gentlemen for your fine work all year long the Denver Broncos win their fifth the Green Bay Packers lose their tenth and that is it for the NFL season for these teams Playoff action begins next week on CBS Sports. We hope you'll be with us on Sunday. The playoff matchups will be announced tomorrow as the NFL sorts out the times and the games in the various zones when the season is completed tomorrow night. Sammy Winder says farewell to the Denver Broncos. And we'll return to Mile High Stadium in a moment.